It is good to see you, good to be back with you again. The last time we saw you, you were in the midst of your home makeover. It looks like it's finished. So let's talk about life and home ownership and yeah. remodeling and how all that and coach's room and all that. Yeah, um, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I It's a three-story house. There's a loft, the main floor, and then a, a lower level too. I've only finished one floor, so I still got a lot of work to do. But uh, my dad comes back in July and he's gonna kind of help me demo that whole downstairs and we're gonna get after it, so. So, home demo can be a lot like boxing, you know, it's bits, pieces, it's building, it's reconstructing. So, has this process taught you anything about moving forward in your career and, you know, any parallels with that? It's in patience. Mm -hmm. It's taught me patience. And, and that was something I had to, really had to, I mean, not realize and work on is coming off of uh, my loss is... Patience, because I feel like it took so long to get to that point, you know, and I was ready to run. And now I had to kind of take a step back and readjust and find my way back to the top. So, um, yeah. How do you like the new weight class? So now we'll go back into boxing. How did you like the move up? Do you want to stay there? You know, what are your feelings on that now that you've gone through a fight? Absolutely needed to move up. You know, I, I see my body filling out now, and I'm sort of just seeing a better version of myself because I was you know, working so hard in the gym and then not really being able to fuel properly. And although I felt, I felt good, it was like, you know, you, you can't put on muscle when you're only eating like a certain amount, of, you know, this much protein a day. And it's just like, now I can really just fill out and sort of reap the benefits of all my hard work and see where that takes me. So 135 didn't feel any much different. I'm telling you. I know I looked a lot bigger and stronger and I was fuller and definitely, but I still had a really big cut. And so I think that I'm going to be a natural 140 pounder. I think that's where I'll feel best and be my strongest. Mm -hmm. But for now, I am at 135 and my next fight will be at 135. And obviously just looking to get back in position for that world title, which winning that last fight got me. You know, I made me number one contender for Katie Taylor, except now Katie has back-to-back -back mandatory or uh, free match clauses. Right, right, right. What did you think? What did you think of that fight? How the Taylor's last fight? How did she perform? You know, what insight did you get? Any new insights in the type of fighter that she is? Um, no, I, I, I think that Katie. I think Katie lost that fight, and I think that she didn't look her best. But I also think she did a lot of things that Katie does, like. She, Katie's never really had a jab, right? She doesn't really box behind a jab. She leads a lot with her backhand, tries to counter. And someone like Chantel Cameron is constantly putting on that pressure. You've got to have a jab. You've mm -hmm. got to be able to keep hold her in the center of the ring, not let her push you back to the ropes. And Katie didn't do that. Katie was back against the ropes immediately. And um, she just couldn't handle that pressure. And she tried to pick up those speedy combinations that we see Katie do all the time that she's really good at. But she, she did it too late. And so... I, I'm glad the judges got that decision right. I think Chantel won. Yeah, for sure. And then we have another fight coming up. Amanda Serrano is going to fight Heather Hardy. I watched Heather Hardy's last fight. I'm familiar with the card and the promoter that she fought on. What what does that fight, you know, looking at it, I think it's a really dominant fight for Amanda Serrano. I have a tremendous respect for Heather Hardy. I've enjoyed her career, but it's a large undertaking for her. Yeah. Is there, what is the best case scenario for a win for Heather against Amanda? Best case scenario for Heather is surviving the 10 rounds and not getting stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I have a lot of respect for Heather too, you know, both of them, but I came up in the amateurs with Heather and um, you know, I have nothing bad to say about her, but I do think that this, I think it's an unnecessary fight and um, I think it's an easy win for Serrano, mm -hmm. but you know, I hope that Heather surprises us, you know, she's tough, so maybe, for sure. maybe she'll make it more competitive than we think. Mm -hmm. I've been truth. enjoying you, okay, tell the truth, I've been enjoying you on the broadcast as you're really, really good at it, you know, not just the boxing IQ, but just the rhythm, the personality, it's not all dull and dry, and you really, really are doing well with that. What does it do for you in a way, or challenge you in a way that the sport itself doesn't? So, it's almost like um, studying tape for me, right? It's so, I, I'm not physically working, but mentally I'm working. I think it's just as important, especially in a sport like boxing. So, um, before I go on to, to call one of these fight cards, I'm, I'm 
I'm studying tape, I, you know, I'm breaking down the fighters, I'm looking at what they do good, what they do bad, and that helps me when I go to study my opponents and try to come up with a strategy and break things down. So you're just working my mind when my body isn't, which I think is just important. Now, yeah, I'm happy you ladies are over there blazing the trail. You and Sinise are over there, yeah. you know, putting on for women for top rank. What kind of conversation? Do you guys have conversations with each other of like where you would like to elevate, what you would like to do for women's boxing over there? Are those discussions that you've had with each other? Over in the UK? No, just oh. amongst each other, period. Um, yeah, you know, I... I recently became really tight with Sinisa because Top Rank signed her and obviously we've known each other for the longest time but we actually never even hung out or met each other face to face until the Katie Taylor versus Serona fight here in New York. So since then we've been super tight and yeah, I, we do have those conversations but I think that's really important because I feel like because women's boxing is still on the rise, there's a lot of us who are maybe getting taken advantage of, things aren't transparent, the money isn't there. The pay gap is still there, and so I feel like we can be taken advantage of in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways we can avoid that is by coming together and talking about, not with everybody, but you know, talking about the persons, talking about the type of contracts we have and the deals we have. And so, yeah, with some girls that I trust, and I, I, I've been doing that. I like that. I feel like there's not enough of those conversations. And then in the aftermath, people get signed to these crazy-ass 360 deals where they can't get out, they can't get fights, can't do anything. Is that a, a charge you even want to spirit? Or or do you want to wait more? Well, you're young, so you're not retiring anytime soon. But is that a charge you want to spearhead for women's body and put on your back? Yeah, and I do see myself after I'm done fighting, maybe taking on some fighters and going the man the manager route. And just because I've I've been there and I I know what it's like and I know what we deserve. And so there's not a lot of people who have that experience. You know, this generation of women's boxing are we're really the first women who who could take that knowledge and pass it on and say this, this is where I've been, this is where it was, this is where it is now, this is what you have to do to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's still really hard. It's, it's Women have to hustle more. It's, we can't just, it takes more than just being a good fighter mm -hmm. as a female boxer. Like, you gotta have the full package. You gotta hustle in different ways. I still stand by my whole women's boxing is taking over in the next five years. When I said that to you, when Cynthia and I first started, I think that was maybe like a year and a half ago. So, you know, three years, we, I think it's going to come sooner than that. You know, what do you want to see happen? When, when are you back in the ring? Do you know when you're going to be back in the ring? And, you know, what kind of charge do you want to spearhead with that? And how can we at our show support you? Yeah, so I'm back in the ring early September, I think. I just got the words, like September, like early, early September. Um, it's not locked in yet, so don't. Don't quote me, but um, that's what it's looking at. Again, at 135, uh, and just sort of waiting to see how things play out with with girls like Katie Taylor and Chantel Cameron to see see where I can fall in. Because obviously, my goal is is to get belt, get my belts back. You know, whether you know not at 130, but um, I've always wanted to be a multi division world champion, and I can because of my height and reach and style. I can go to multiple different divisions. The women's are, the women are doing that, and with girls like Terry Harper and. Tasha Jonas like jumping from 130 to 154 so um, lots of big fights for me lots of divisions that I want to take over and and that's my goal for now but uh, I think that the most important thing is that we continue to make big fights that the fans want to see mm -hmm. and we have to do that we don't have the luxury of sitting back and collecting the big check and and just milking it and fighting smaller mm -hmm. you know lesser opponents you know and so I think we're setting the tone too for boxing you know you see the men kind of picking it up now and wanting to challenge each other and, you know, taking the risk. I haven't seen a boring women's fight. I don't even know the last time I saw a boring women's fight. So, yeah, I think you guys are putting the pressure on them yeah. because the fans are recognizing that the, women's are, the women are coming to battle and the men are just kind of skating by. Yeah. And thank you for that. Yeah. Won't women do it? <laughs> Always have to do it. Yeah, and I think we'll, we're going to continue to do that. We see the benefits. We see, we see how it's uh, benefiting us and, you know, the response we're getting. So mm -hmm. It's awesome. Well, Wonderful to see you. Looking forward to hearing you as always. Looking forward to seeing you as always. We want to come to the house and barbecue. We're going to come out there yeah. and do a show out when there. When it's done in five years, Scott. Hopefully not. <laughs> That's okay. That You'll have uh, more belts to hang in there when right. it's finally finished exactly. for sure. Thank you, ma'am. Good to see you. <laughs>